G'day everyone and welcome back to Apaya Puzzles and a special welcome to anyone who has come to this with very little or no knowledge of cryptic crosswords. This video today is for you. I'm going to be taking on a cryptic from well-known setter Liam Runnels in the Saturday paper in Melbourne today. And these are beginner friendly puzzles. Uh, if you're a complete beginner, then they'll still, uh, they, any cryptic crossword will be a, uh, a bit of a mystery. Uh, but today I'm going to uh, labor especially on my processing of each clue just so that you can see not only how each of the elements works but how I kind of try to start processing it when I look at it cold and I and initially don't know what's happening how I kind of get a um, get a hold on what's the word we say get a get, get a hook into I mean, that's the expression um, <clears throat> into the clue so um, hopefully this is educational and entertaining. Well, let's see how we go. Liam is a is a great crossword setter, uh, and I think in particular his the way that his clues read on the surface of them is is typically quite fun and interesting. So let's see how we go. You can see uh, the clue that I'm focused on in big there. So let's go with number one: fluorine, hazardous and full of energy. Okay, so. Yeah, um, so the first thing I see basically when I'm looking at a clue is, well actually first of all if you are brand new to cryptics, let's, under, let's understand the very basic premise of a cryptic crossword clue, which is that there's two components. One of them is what you would normally see as a regular crossword clue. Uh, in this case it happens to be the word energy at the end, <coughs> oh sorry, full of energy. Um, and then the rest of the clue is wordplay, which is stuff that we can use to build up the same word. And this will make more sense as we process this clue and I'll explain a bit more as well. So, um, when I look at this clue, initially you're looking for words that you might suspect, uh, like, like a word like fluorine, where you go, ah, this could be abbreviated. I know that it's, it's a chemical element and it presumably has a abbreviation on the on the table of, el table of elements and so that's probably going to be an F. Uh, I'm not sure initially is it fluorine is it an F or an FL but it's something like that. Uh, then I go okay well if that is my if that there is a, is a abbreviation I need to put an F in the answer that's part of the word play. That means that the other end of the clue either energy or full of energy will be the definition and Literally 99% of the time the definition is either at the end or at the beginning. It's never just sitting in the middle So, you know when you first come to the clue, okay, I'm going to be looking for a final answer that either means fluorine or Maybe means energy or means full of energy, but it's not going to mean hazardous because that's in the middle of the clue and when I see that fluorine is a word that typically gets, gets uh, abbreviated, in this case to an F, then I go, well, the definition must be at the end, either energy or full of energy. And so then looking at this word F, I thought, okay, what's hazardous doing now? Maybe I need another word for hazardous that's gonna go after this, and that will give me my final answer, which means full of energy. And the thing that came to mind was risky. So risky is hazardous. And frisky is full of energy. So that is our first clue passed. Uh, let's go on to the next one and see what we find. And you know, this, this might seem a little bit kind of, I don't know, arcane or esoteric that you would have, you'd have to know the chemical elements and whatnot, but often you don't really need to know. You, you see fluorine, you think, okay, that we, chemical elements come up a lot in cryptic crosswords because they do abbreviate to short letters. And uh, so with fluorine, like I say, I didn't know initially if that was an F or an FL, but I thought it probably is something like that, and that's likely to be part of our wordplay. Bear with me one second. So I just had to have a little cough there. Uh, so let's move on to another clue and see what we get. So Cook again starts to regret exploring hot Eastern Australian terrain. What I should also do in this puzzle is to focus a little bit on surface reading. So what we mean by surface reading is just what the clue means in the everyday sense uh, of the word. So we've got in this case a chef who once again is regretting exploring hot Eastern Australian terrain. So that's what the, the surface reading of the clue is suggesting. But normally in cryptic clues, 
the surface rating is irrelevant to the cryptic rating, which is what we need to do to find the answer. Now, this is a, a classic clue type. Um, so as I'm passing this clue, um, there's a couple of things I notice. One is it's a short answer, but it's a long clue, which is normally a bit weird because how can you get so many words reducing to just a six letter word? Uh, and then I see the word starts, and this is one of these indicator words. I'm looking for words that might have some suggestion about where things go in terms of a position um, within, a, within an answer, or rearranging letters, uh, those kinds of things. <clears throat> and the word starts is very commonly used, or something that means starts, and beginnings, etc., to suggest that we need to take the first letters of a bunch of words as part of our wordplay processing. And if we have a look at this starts to, so the starts to all of these words, regret, so R E H E A T. What does that spell? That is reheat. And reheat means cook again. So um, another thing to think about with, with uh, clues that have an RE at the beginning is you quite often will have this word again in them. Um, and that can be useful just to notice, think, ah, oh, maybe I'm looking for a verb like heat or whatever it is that's going to be um, happening again, which is to say it's going to have a re at the beginning. So if you're really lost, you might think, what if I started with re? Where can I go from there? Um, in that case, you might actually think, oh, hang on, starts of regret exploring, that's re, and then realize, oh, the rest of it also goes on to do the same. So that is two down. Let's try nine across. Uh, Scrooge makes scent piles with princess. Uh, well, I'm not sure about this. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is princess. Princess comes up a lot in cryptic crosswords to mean the letters D-I, as in princess die. And again, that might seem ridiculous, but there's certain things like this that come up so often that once you've done a few, you start to realize. And then of course you start to think in these terms. So if you see another word like prince or queen or something, you might think, ah, oh, is there a person that I need to be thinking of there or an abbreviation for a person. So princess is a good one because it's just two letter DI. So that might be part of our um, wordplay, which would make Scrooge the definition probably, which is to say that the final answer means Scrooge. Um, makes scent piles with princess. Ah, well, well, no. So we've also got an H in the clue. And this is useful to consider, sometimes we're looking at anagrams, so there'll be, we'll come across one soon enough, um, but there'll be a bunch of, there'll be a, a word or two and there's something telling us to rearrange those words to get the final answer. So you can look at the letters that you've got in place and go, well, are any of these words containing an H? Well, with does, uh, but it doesn't look like it goes along with a word that tells us to rearrange anything. So. I don't know, I think I'm going to skip over this one for now and come back. <clears throat> Three down. Small steps by you and me. Time for moonwalk costume. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, some, in, some potential abbreviations. We've got small, which often abbreviates to an S, like on clothing tags. Uh, steps by you and me. Steps. I'm not sure. Now, step, it could be that small steps is actually the definition, but let's assume for a second that small is an S and that's part of wordplay. And that means that the definition will be at the other end. So moonwalk costume or just costume. You and me could be us or we. Uh, time abbreviates to T in many contexts. Moonwalk costume. See, I feel like that's the definition. So you and me being us or we and time being T. So that could be W E and then T. Uh, small steps. Well, I'm not sure either with this one. This moonwalk costume is curious. Um, it feels like something that, you know, an astronaut would wear. Would wear. Uh, space, oh, space suit. Yeah, I think it is that. I haven't actually fully passed this. Ah, okay. 
Ah, right, so small was S. Steps are paces, P-A-C-E-S. You and I, I was saying we and us, but actually it's the letter U for you, <coughs> like a text abbreviation, and the letter I for I, and then the letter T for time, and that gives us a, a moonwalk cos costume, which is a space suit. Very good, okay. So three letter answer here shouldn't be too difficult. You bet 20 Singapore dollars, tails. Yeah, so <clears throat> like with the other clue over here, we had the starting letters. In this one, we've got the tail letters of the words 20 Singapore and dollars, which is Y-E-S. And Y-E-S does mean you bet. <clears throat> uh, as in, would you like to go to the football? You bet. Uh, <clears throat> so in terms of passing that, it wasn't until I got to that final word, tails, that I realized, oh yeah, that's gonna be final letters, and then we work backwards, Y-E-S, and we get you bet. Uh, that clue's shaping up, but let's come back around. Uh, oh, this is interesting, so I wrote five, one. So it's, it's worth considering the in what we call the enumeration, five, one. Uh, sometimes that is appointed to, because there's obviously not too many expressions that have that structure. But let's see, tabloid features poet, uh, poet hues for a broad audience. Uh, who is a poet called Hughes? I don't know. I think that, that we need to know about a short, a short uh, first name, presumably, for a poet called Hughes. In, uh, so tabloid features. I think we're looking for a word for tabloid that's going to have inside of it, it's going to feature a short word here for this person Hughes and a broad audience or for a broad audience will be the definition. What is this letter though? 5-1. I'm not sure, there's some other wordplay potentials in there but let's leave it for a second. If we can actually get this down clue then we'd be in good shape. So let's try 12 down. Oh, I just realized as well, I've not been flicking around <laughs> on my zoomed clue, apologies. Uh, so 12, mates frogs did one trick. So the first thing I think about when I see this is, and quite often you think about this with clues, is this is an 11 letter answer. And often we're looking in, in cryptics at anagrams. And so the question would be, is there a string of 11 letters in here? like frogs did one is 11 letters, that we could rearrange to get the final answer. And if it was gonna be rearranged, there'd need to be a word telling us that. And in this case, the word trick could be that. So we're, we're needing to be tricky with these letters. Um, it's called an anagram indicator. That's not the most kind of usual way of it working because it normally be something much more explicitly saying about rearranging or breaking but trick could work for these 11 letters. And then we need a word for mates, which, which means that anagram. Now, um, so four, seven. Yeah, so this is gonna be good friends. So all of those letters, frogs did one, rearrange, good friends. Uh, and we get a G up here, which was what I was curious about. But let's have a look again, tabloid. So now I'm just looking actually at the definition. So does this mean tabloid? Can I think of anything that goes there? Can I think of anything that goes there full stop? <laughs> um, or, or it could be tabloid features, that could be a thing. Um, or for a broad audience. Ah, I know what this is. So for a broad audience is the definition. And I, from that I've thought rated G. <laughs> so that's an unusual, uh, answer to a crossword clue. Now, I, I think that's right. Let's have a look at how that's going to work. So a tabloid is R-A-G, a rag. Uh, so that's a common kind of short synonym for a newspaper. And that is featuring, which is to say it has inside of it this Ted, which is the poet Hughes, Ted Hughes. So um, one of the cool things about cryptics is that you often don't need to necessarily know, like in this case I didn't know that the, the poet Ted Hughes, uh, but I managed to get the answer from some other elements 
and then uh, I've learned a little thing about there being a poet called Ted Hughes uh, that, that might come up again in cryptics or it might, uh, it might come up in the world. It's surprising how commonly you come up against a word in a cryptic that you've never seen before and then two days later, there it is. I mean, some of the words like Quonset Hut I saw years ago in a cryptic and literally three days later, I read it in a book. Um, this really obscure word. So uh, we'll see if Ted Hughes comes up today. Uh, now let's have a look at 14 surprising reason artist was unable to paint water question mark so let's talk about the question mark in a second let me first of all have a think about this clue 3234 surprising reason artist was so we need so again counting the letters we've got 12 letter answer and I'm just wondering if there's a 12 letter string that we could rearrange but I don't think that's what's going to happen um, Ah, yes, okay. <clears throat> so this is, I've gotten this basically just from looking at the letters they had. This U is interesting and the O as well. You've got a two letter word here with an O. Oops, sorry, I've got to scroll that away a bit. Um, oh, and <laughs> uh, let's also not forget to, I don't know why I'm forgetting this. I've been doing this for months now and um, yeah. I think because maybe with the Saturday paper, uh, everything looks so neat the way it's organized. I don't. I forget that I need to, it's easier to do it this way. So, <clears throat> um, surprising reason artist was unable to paint water. Now the question mark often means that there's something a little bit unusual about the way this clue needs to be read, or it's, it's figurative, not so much just taking components and looking for anagrams or look, looking for abbreviations and including words in other words, or whatever. Not so much that, and more under, reading the clue in a figurative way. and. When I saw this U and O, I thought, well, this this has to be probably on or of, and this U, what's what's this word going to be here? And the thing that came to ma to mind was out, and then I thought, ah, what? Out? We've got this word surprising uh, at the beginning, and I thought, ah, out of the blue, that has something to do with being surprising, and of course, out of the blue does mean surprising, but it also could mean it could be the reason that an artist was unable to paint water because they were they'd run out of blue paint so that's a nice um, I think probably a lot of people who've never done cryptics before assume that all cryptic crossword clues are something like that where there's this like really like kind of meta thing that you have to do rather than just the rote thing of most clues where you're just taking little bits and pieces of letters and words and smushing them together in, a, in quite a kind of logical and structured way but this is the kind of clue where it isn't so structured it does take a bit of um, lateral thinking so oh, interestingly this one here <laughs> looks like out of something as well uh, but let's have a look at that while we're here so 17 <clears throat> traitors deed in Canberra frequently with motive so uh, again first things I'm seeing is Canberra which for those outside of Australia is otherwise known as the ACT. So that comes up a lot because ACT, of course, does come into clues. It could actually be at the beginning there. Um, in fact, I think it might be. Um, so yeah, because we're, we're probably gonna look for a traitor's deed uh, and a deed would be an ACT. So Canberra is ACT, frequently with motive. Well, it's gonna be ACT of something. Um, Act of Descent or something. Frequently with motive. So what's, well, I'm wondering as well where the of comes in. So the, the, every letter in the answer should be represented somehow or be arrived at through something in the wordplay. So if I'm saying Canberra is act, then I need frequently with motive to give me all of the rest, including this of. Ah, so frequently is often, right. And then we need uh, a word for motive. So an act of, uh, and what's a word for motive? Reason, um, goal. I should be able to get it in definition now. So a traitor's deed is an act of, surely it's often for frequent. And then a word for motive. 
All I can think of is like tension, but that's that's not gonna work. Active. No, I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, the beauty of crosswords is we can come back around once we've got more letters. So let's try this one. Uh, this is 15 down. Googling toilet with royal rump occasionally. I've been forgetting actually to really have a think about the surface readings as well because Liam tends to write some quite fun ones. So Googling toilet with royal pump occasionally is an unusual and funny structure for a surface. Um, so I can actually see from the, from the L that I've got in place and the word Googling, this is probably gonna be looking up. And then we can think about how that works from a wordplay point of view. Googling looking up, a toilet is a loo, royal, is king and uh, pump occasionally. Uh, so every we need every occasional letter of the word pump. So every second letter, the U and then the P. So looking up, <clears throat> so that gives us an O here. Well, that, uh, it can't be look at the active tension. Active, maybe it's not 10, but that seems quite likely. Let's try 22 across and we'll come back. <clears throat> so. I had joined Olympics group, why foolishness? So immediately I'm thinking the letter I is going to be inside. It's going to join a word for an Olympic group. Uh, where am I down there? And actually I have an I in the answer, so that adds weight to that. So that might be the I that we're looking at there. Um, it's inside a word for an Olympics group. That could be like a squad or a team or something like that. Um, why foolishness? Okay, so the why um, is probably going to be the end as a Y, as the letter Y, again, kind of text speak kind of thing. So now with this I is going to be inside of a four letter word for an Olympics group and the whole thing will mean foolishness uh, and what team, side, Olymp oh, the, the what's the world governing body for the Olympics, the IOC. Wow, that's not going to work, is it? Oh, oh, I see. No, I got this all wrong. So <clears throat> the I had is not, I was thinking I had joined as in it, it went inside of, but actually we need I and had as an abbreviation for ID, um, I'd. And then uh, the Olympics group is the IOC. So an idiocy is foolishness. So the word joined is just saying that I'd is being joined next to IOC and the letter Y to get idiocy. Uh, so, let, and that's interesting for this six down with an I at the end. You don't see too many expressions like that in English. So that can help or hinder because it could be that that um, points us in the right direction really quickly, or it could be that it's an obscure plant name or something that is hard to solve. But we'll see when we come back. So 19 down, one could expect a neighborhood sewer faces vast amounts of liquid. Okay, so the first thing, again, it's a long clue for a short answer. And then I see the word faces and I think, ah, that's similar to starts in like the facing letters of things, the, the first letters of things. And if we go O, C, E, A, N, S, we get oceans. And of course, oceans are vast amounts of liquid. And again, the surface reading, which is talking about a neighborhood um, sewer with vast amounts of liquid. That makes sense as a surface reading. You'll find that some cryptics, even if the cryptic cluing is really, the, 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 the machinations you've got to go through are really interesting, the actual surface reading doesn't really mean very much. Uh, whereas Liam makes a lot of effort to make the surfaces kind of sound interesting and plausible sentences as well, and sometimes quite funny. So, <clears throat> uncover former post office with empty safe. So, uh, <clears throat> a few things come to mind immediately. We have um, the word former, which is quite often abbreviated to X, is EX. Post office, PO, that will come up on maps and so forth. And empty safe. So, the word safe, if we empty it out, if we take out the middle letters, we get S and E. So if we put, put all that together, we get X, P, O, S, E is expose, <clears throat> and that means uncover. Now, actually, when I first saw this clue and I read the word uncover, I thought maybe we're gonna take a word, the, the next word, 
and we're going to take off its covering letter and take the first letter off. So former could become orma, or you might take another word for former and remove the first letter. But actually, <clears throat> as I went through, it became clear this was not that, and that uncover is actually the final answer. So 25 down. Uh, Cockney's rent is madness. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is a particular kind of clue that that, le that leans on uh, Cockney accent, the Cockney accent, which typically what's happening is we're going to take a word and remove its, its, its first H. So Cockneys tend to drop the H off letters, off, off words rather. Um, and so that's what this tends to mean in cryptic in cryptic land. So we're going to need a word for rent. We're going to take it that starts with an H and we're just going to take the H off and then we'll have the final answer which is uh, madness and it's a three letter answer with an E on the end. Ah yes, so the word for rent that we're looking for is higher and if you were a cockney you'd say ire which is I-R-E and that is um, madness or, or anger. So. Um, that's a slightly um, misdirecting definition because you wouldn't normally, I don't know, I would normally not think of Aya meaning madness. I would think, because um, madness, Aya is really is anger, whereas madness we often understand as meaning craziness, but it does of course also mean madness, like ang anger. Um, so I'm going to look at that again, 25. It had, the, it had an exclamation mark on the end. Um, you might wonder about that. The question mark, as I explained, had a, has a purpose a lot of the time. Sometimes it'll just be there for, for no real reason, just for the surface structure. In this case, with the exclamation mark, uh, that is just there as, as regular punctuation, but it can have a particular meaning. And if we come up with one, I'll explain that. Uh, so let's try 24. It looks like we've got a lot of letters to work with. Sound of tangling meat in English city. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, it doesn't immediately, ah, oh, actually it does come to, I know what the answer is from the letters, um, but I wasn't readily passing this. <clears throat> right, yeah, okay, so, it's quite a difficult one, this. Uh, so sound, uh, a solo word sound and thought, this is likely what's called a homophone indicator. So that means we need to take a word for, in this case, tangling, and spell it wrong, spell it differently. So it's as if we, it's as if someone said the word to us, so we hear it, we hear the sound of it, but we don't know how they've spelt it, so we spell it differently. Uh, these come up quite a bit, and we, so we need a word for tangling that we're going to spell differently and then we need a short word for meat and that short word for meat comes at the end here and we're looking for an English city as the definition. Uh, so ham is the final three letters and then it might come to mind just from the letters that we've got that a, a city in England is Nottingham. So that's, I just thought of Nottingham as, as the city and then had to work backwards and realise that a word for tangling is notting which would have a K on it, but we're going to spell it differently. So just spell it notting without the K. Ham for meat and English city is the definition. Um, uh, quite an unusual surface reading that one. Sound of tangling meat. Uh, I don't know what it means to tangle meat, um, but hey ho, 18 down. Properly match fix by half time with lousy sides. Right, so <clears throat> a few things that immediately stand out. Lousy sides, this size word. Remember, we're looking for words that either can be abbreviated to something um, or that have a, a short version of themselves, like princess and die, um, or words that might indicate something to do with placement or taking particular letters or rearranging things. Now, the word sides might suggest that we need to take the side letters of a word. So what if we take the L and the Y, the sides of that word, and what if that's in the in the final answer and it would probably be at the end because it's at the end of the clue maybe not but it probably will be but the main thing about recognizing that is that if we go on the assumption that that is part of our wordplay giving ly 
then that means the other end of the clue must be the definition. So it's either going to be properly or properly matched. It's probably just going to be properly. Um, as I said, one or the other end of the clue in 99% of the cases is the is the regular crossword clue. Just you could you could strip out all the rest and just have the word properly, and it would be the definition for the final answer here. So if that's the, the assumption, we know we're looking for a word probably that means properly. It starts with E and then ends in L Y, I believe. So. Uh, so then we go match fix by half time. So, and the whole thing means properly. Uh, hmm. Match fix or match fix. Half time, I would normally think is going to be ah. Well, half time can be abbreviated to HT, I think. And there wouldn't be a match fixed going here and the whole thing's gonna mean properly. Nah, why can't I see that? Hmm. It might not end in LY, but I'm pretty sure it does. Of course, you could be completely wrong, and it could be that lousy size is the definition, or size is definition, but I, I'm pretty confident this is, especially as well, because LY for, from lousy gives a good ending to a word for properly, because you'd imagine a word for properly may end in an LY. Um, I just can't see that, so we'll come back around. Uh, let's see, 26. Happily sends orange juice around to solve a cunning. We look at the letters we've got. We've got an S and a Y, so we might ask where that Y is coming from in the in the clue. Yeah, so I've got S and Y, and I'm thinking, where's this Y? Like, what's what's giving me a Y? And I realise that another word for cunning is sly, so that's probably going to go at the end there. Um, <clears throat> that means that happily or happily sends is going to be. Uh, our definition, our regular clue. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me one sec. Okay, I think I'm back in the land of the living. So, uh, where are we? 26 across. <coughs> right. Uh, oh, sorry. There we go. Um, so, Sly was cunning, and then happily is probably the definition. Sends orange juice round to solver. So, orange juice is OJ a lot of the time, and if we send that around, we're reversing it. So instead of saying OJ, we say JO. And so I thought of JO and go, well, that's likely to go at the beginning there. And of course, you can see probably we're looking for a word for happily that starts with JO. It's joyously. And where does the U come from? Well, solver. You are the person solving the crosswords. So that is where that comes from. And you will see that quite a bit solver or setter for the setters abbreviate uh, setters initials in this case liam runnels lr or the word me or i um so there we go now uh 16 down horse in apollo battle carrying headmaster okay so uh this a few things strike me about this headmaster <coughs> this is quite common, especially in, uh, more so in Australian crosswords. Uh, there's a whole backstory around around this that I won't go into here. But headmaster, the head letter of master is M. The first letter of master is M. So I think we're going to we're going to put the letter M. It's being carried by something, so it's going to go inside something. And again, once I've identified that that's the likely piece of wordplay, the other end of the clue must be the definition so we're probably looking for a word for a horse and then I saw in a polo battle and this word battle is again one of these probably one of these um, anagram indicators it's a thing telling us that these letters need to kind of go into battle which is to be thrown about it it might seem weird because battle doesn't really mean mixing up letters but uh, basically any word that has any sense of kind of um, 
you know, movement or, or kind of uh, just, uh, well, I, don't, I don't know, it's hard to justify in some sense, but you do see a lot of words that uh, you just kind of get in the habit of thinking, well, there's seven letters here, I need seven letters, battle, fight, yeah, you know, things are getting messed up. Uh, so we're looking for an anagram of inner polo. We've got the A and the O, so that looks likely as well. And then it's going to be carrying the head letter of master, and we're going to get a word for a horse. Now, um, this might be a word I don't know. Now it's probably going to end in E now, I guess. And then we're left with pollen M. So Palomino, that sounds like a word. I think that might be right. Let's see, 23 across. Um, <clears throat> row or row when Rome's river is empty. Uh, so <clears throat> this word row is interesting because it has uh, lots of meanings, but also it can be pronounced as row, meaning a fight or a, you know, a scuffle or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so you see this come up a lot. It's worth remembering that it has those two meanings. Uh, and Rome's River, now, what commonly, a common um, way that row or, or row is used in cryptic clues is to indicate the letters T I E R because a, a row of, in, of seats is a tier of seats. And uh, that's often used as part of wordplay to build up a longer word, like meteor or whatever it might be. But I think this might be the answer directly. So a row is a tier, and then Rome's River is empty. Now, is it, um, I feel like there, there's a river, is it the Tiber, T-I-B-E-R, I'm not sure. But I feel like that there's a five letter river in Rome with that with that with those letters and you take out the middle one, you empty it out and you get Tia. In fact, since we're here, why don't we have a look? Um, Rome River. Oh, there we go, the Tiba. Right, uh, so done and dusted. Uh, and just looking at the surface reading of that now as well, uh, row when Rome's, Rome's river is empty is quite a funny surface. So how are you rowing when the river is empty? Uh, 21, 21 down. Some loser voted for fossil fuel supplier. Uh, so immediately, uh, actually uh, these are, uh, this is a type of clock I'll often not clock onto for a little while. Uh, but in theory, it's the easiest type of clue once you know that that's the kind of clue you're looking at. So what we're looking at is for to take some of the letters of loser voted from the middle and we'll get a word that means a fossil fuel supplier. And I don't know, this might be an Australian expression, I'm not sure, but you can see here, uh, it won't let me do it here, but S-E-R-V-O, spelt out in the middle of the clue, is a service station which is a supplier of fossil fuels <laughs> and again a funny kind of surface reading so 20 across where are you uh, showing off neckwear to prick okay then um, yeah so I got this just looking at the at the letters that I've got it's useful if you realize there's an I in the third to last position it could be an ing word. If you look at the clue, you've got a potential ing definition showing off or showing. So that looks likely. Um, and our final answer is boasting. I got that basically just from showing off. But then I realized looking back, a sting is a prick and neckwear is a boa. Uh, so that's probably one I would have struggled to think of just from looking at the word neckwear, uh, although it does come up quite a bit in cryptics. Uh, meanwhile, my scroll keeps screening. Uh, apologies. Uh, so that's that. Ah, now this has a G here. Let's see what this was. Um, where am I? Properly match fix by half time. Ah, 
This is not an I, an E. <clears throat> uh -huh. that, the, uh, well, we'll come back. I know what this act of is now. Um, but this is rightly, which is properly. Match fix is rig. Half time is HT. And um, LOI is lousy sides. This is a, a, a good lesson in don't put in letters that you are not confident about <laughs> or that you don't have, you haven't fully solved because it often misleads you when trying to solve other clues. Right, so this is an act of treason, obviously, as, um, where am I, 17 across. Uh, so the traitor's deed is act of treason. We do have act, frequently with motive. Ah, frequently is just oft, right, the, the shorter version of often. And then motive is reason, and we get our act of treason. So there we go, bottom half of the grid is done. Let's try uh, five down. Let back in to consume book by Tim Twist. So <clears throat> when there's a kind of back word, potentially, it's again a likely, it may not be, but quite often we re something. So if you let back in, you re, well, it could be readmit. Uh, yes, and that is what it is. So to consume a book is to read, and Tim Twist is the word Tim being twisted around to give mit, and readmit is to let back in. Uh, I don't know if Tim Twist is a real personal thing, but, um, but there we go. Uh, so five across with a first letter. It's always useful to have the first letter in place. Stargates alien races. Uh, well, I was going to say, I think I'm correct. Um, oh yes, I was trying to find the anagram here. So this is an anagram clue. So eight letter answer, and we notice we've got a word at the beginning that has eight letters. So what if they were being rearranged? And what would tell us that, that they're being rearranged? Well, the word alien, if something's alien, then it's strange or different. So what if we make this Stargate different and get a word for races. We have an R, which is good, because there's an R in the, in the word here. This is called, in this case, the, the anagram fodder, and this is the anagram indicator. So R at the beginning, we're looking for a word that reads races, so probably an S at the end. And if we rearrange the rest of the letters in there, we get regattas, which are races. And again, very nice surface reading. That's a completely plausible kind of sentence. Uh, now, this one with the I on the end, let's see what that is. Ah, well, US pop star at the end is probably going to be, it's probably going to be a person's name, but let's see. Fan gets wine cocktail. Yeah, so 11 letters for US pop star. Um, well, I thought for a second that cocktail was going to be an anagram indicator. So if you mix things up in a cocktail and that would give us, but this here is only um, 11, oh, that's 11 letters. I thought for some reason it wasn't 11 letters, but it is, and we've got 11 letters here. Um, so we just need to find a US pop star that's an anagram of all this, uh, which starts with a G. Uh, Gwen, Gwen Stefani. Can't say I know too much about Gwen Stefani. I think that's going to be the spelling. Or is it Gwyn? No, I think it's Gwen. We've got an I down here, and there's only one I in, in the fodder here. So, so there we go. Uh, 13 across. Young ladies concealing extremely illegal <coughs> weapons. Well, Concealing suggests to me that we're going to take something and it's going to and we're going to put it inside something else So the young ladies potentially are going to put inside conceal a word for extremely or extremely illegal or something like this so If that was the case young ladies conceal something then the definition for the clue will be the other end which would be weapons and my thinking with young ladies is that that's often misses as in um, M-I-S-S-E-S, -S -S -E 
And if we, um, if that's concealing the extreme letters of illegal, the outside letters, we would have I and L, the outside, the extreme letters of illegal. So if we put I and L inside a word for young ladies, misses, we get miss, I, L, E, S, missiles, which are weapons. Um, so seven down with an I on the end, sailor's first impression of bones. Uh, <clears throat> ah, okay, well, I wonder about this. This might be a word I'm not familiar with. My, my thinking with the wordplay immediately was this word here. And this is because uh, sailor is very commonly abbreviated to the word tar in cryptics. There's a whole bunch of abbreviations for sailors, tar being one of them. Um, and if we have tar and this S and the first letter of impression, we get tarsi. And I'm not familiar with that, but I'm thinking that might mean bones. So let's have a look. Yeah, so tarsus, because there's seven bones in the foot. So I guess tarsi is the plural. That feels to me like the kind of word where <clears throat> when this is when the puzzle being set is ended up with a T and an I in this position and there's been almost no words that go here and he's found that Tarsi is one of them and thought, well, that'll do. <laughs> and then I'll make the clue really easy um, because no one's going to know that word. I don't know, maybe it's more commonly known than, than I realise, but um, there's probably not a lot of alternative words that would have fit there if he'd already placed the other two. So 10 across, starting with an R, announce proper ceremony. Okay, so this um, announce immediately, I'm thinking this is one of these homophone indicators, which is that if someone announces something out loud, um, you might then mishear that and spell it differently. So um, the, we need a word for proper, which we're gonna spell incorrectly. And the word we need is right, R-I-G-H-T and we spell that incorrectly to give R-I-T-E, and that is a ceremony. So, eight down. Tiny soldier left home base embarrassed with horns. So, embarrassed I, um, stands out to me because it often is used to, you need to abbreviate it to the word red. If you're embarrassed, then you're red. and that would likely go at the end of the answer. And I think we're gonna have a word that means with horns, so uh, an, an adjective effectively. So yes, so a tiny soldier. This comes up a lot, a soldier being an ant. So a tiny soldier is an ant. It might seem a bit weird, but it, it's a cryptic thing that you'll see a lot. Um, left home base. Yeah, I'm assuming this is antlered, <laughs> um, but, oh, I see. Uh, left, oh, right, so, sorry, a bit slow there, slow on the uh, uptake. So tiny soldier is ant, left is the letter L, home base is the base letter of home, the bottom letter of it, for E, and then embarrassed is red. And I first noticed the embarrassed and got thought thinking this is red and then it led pretty quickly to antlered but I might have also noticed well soldiers kind of sometimes and left is very commonly L the word base is very commonly telling you to take the bottom letter so there's all of these words that I might be noticing as potential wordplay uh, but the really important ones are the ones at the beginning at the end because as soon as you notice that oh tiny soldier is and if you think if you think that's right then that tells you the definition is the other end of the clue. And this thing, especially people who have been doing cryptics for just a little while, I think one of the common difficulties they have is actually identifying which part of the clue is the definition. And there's a lot of intuition that builds up over time around how to do that. And it's more difficult in harder crosswords. Um, but these are the kinds of things I think that are going on underneath the surface of that intuition is, you know, could this word be abbreviated could it be an indicator word um, or the opposite what the, the definition was um, I don't know, bones like tarsi and you might think to yourself well I can't think of 
um, what bones could be doing apart from being the definition. Like I can't think of a short synonym for it. Uh, it doesn't look like an indication word, etc., etc. Oh, and that leaves us with just the one answer to go. Nine across. This was the one I struggled with earlier on. Scrooge makes scent piles with Princess. Well, I don't think Princess dies in there because there's nowhere to put it. Um, it's not Ebenezer. <laughs> makes scent piles. Makes scent piles with Princess. Huh. I, don't, I honestly can't make any sense of this word. Like I don't, of this clue, I don't see what words are indicators, what are potential um, abbreviations apart from princess, which wasn't right. Um, I can't think of a word that means princess or a word that means Scrooge that would go in here. I feel like it probably is Scrooge. As the definition makes scent, it could be like urns, piles, loads, lots with princess. That isn't, let's make sure that's not well, even if it was an I here, it wouldn't make a lot of sense, I don't think, but I'll just double check. Fan gets wine when Stefan, yeah, only one eye. So Scrooge makes scent piles with Princess. So I'm thinking things like, okay, Scrooge, obviously it's a person, but it can also be a verb to Scrooge. Uh, and if it is the definition, that's probably what it's gonna be, to, like the verb, um, Princess, uh, I don't know what that can mean apart from DI. Um, there could be another princess that I'm not thinking of, or there could be another uh, a synonym for princess. The rest though makes scent piles. Well, I had originally thought that we could, if we make these letters, we rearrange them, but we don't have uh, any A's in there, we've got two in the answer, so. So what if it's Scrooge as a short word at the beginning? The definition is princess. So we have a short word for Scrooge and then short word for makes, sent, piles or some something going on here. Hmm, well, 50 minutes or so. Do I want to labor on this? Also, if you're new to solving, you may, um, I, I, it might be worth me uh, encouraging you that there's nothing wrong with using a dictionary or Google to find things uh, because there's certain things you just, you know, you, especially when you first start doing cryptics, certain references you're not going to understand. The, you'll see the word model come up a lot in cryptics, which is, needs to be abbreviated to the letter T. And you might think, what the hell? Well, it's got to do with the model T forward. So it's a very <laughs> obscure reference. Once you see it and you know it, you'll see it a lot and it'll just be second nature, but it's totally fine to use resources, especially when you, like if you get to this point, you just can't solve this. You can either walk away and not have learned a thing, or you can look something up. So. Of course, I could just keep trying because it, it feels like I'll get there eventually, but I don't want this video to drag on too long. So, H-A-S-A-E, we have our friend onelock.com, which is great. You can put in masks. Cheapskate, well, there we go. Um, you can see at the top there, cheap, uh, can you see that? You can't quite see that, but this says cheapskate here. Um, and that will be our answer because we needed a Scrooge. So it was actually the noun Scrooge. 
and we get a little superlative crucial verbalism at the bottom there. Crucial verbalism being the, the kind of the noun describing all things crossword. Now, let's see how this worked actually. Ah, so the princess was Kate and makes scent piles. Ah, so makes is just a filler word. It's saying the, the definition makes the wordplay. Scent is the letter C at the beginning. And then piles is heaps. Kate is our princess and cheapskate is our Scrooge. So there we go. Um, Liam Runnels, March 16th, 2024, done and dusted. Thank you so much to Liam for that crossword. And thanks to you for sticking with me to the end. Uh, if you are someone that's new to Cryptics, then welcome and uh, glad, glad to have you here. Uh, I do a lot of content on crosswords and on Sudoku. And I'm hoping to do more of these kind of slow ones like this, where I really kind of pick apart what's happening with the thought process for those who are, are kind of quite new and haven't yet kind of established the kind of intuition for how to pass clues. Also do a lot of difficult crosswords, so check out those if, if that interests you. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to stay in touch with what's happening on the channel. Uh, I'll be back again soon for more fun and games. And until then, happy puzzling, and I'll see you all next time.